People are very complex in their needs. They're multi-dimensional. But horses have actually pretty simple needs. They want to be safe. They want to be able to find comfort and relief from pressure. And they also want to be able to play. So how can you get your horse to feel safe? One of the best ways is to make sure that you're not trapping them, that you're not acting in a way that makes them feel suppressed, restricted, grabbed, trapped, held, anything like that. You're actually better off doing things like allowing the horse to drift and bringing him back to you, letting go of the reins and bringing them back instead of just holding on for dear life. I know that's what we want to do, but if we can start here and, and begin to give the horse a safer feeling when they're with us, then it's not actually going to get that bad. We tend to cause the problems because the horse was fine till we showed up, right? He was standing here, he was walking, trotting, cantering around in the paddock with his friends, and then we showed up, put a bridle on, a saddle on, and all of a sudden he feels unsafe. And so those behaviors usually present themselves around people. So how can I do my part to not bring that out in the horse? And if I get a horse that's already been conditioned to behave that, like that around people, how can I get that horse to really understand that he's safe with me? So the next thing, uh, well actually still on that, on that level, is matching the horse's energy. You know, when, uh, when you think about you as a person, are you a low energy, a medium energy, or a high energy person? And I'm quite a high energy person, but my horse is a low energy horse. Like physically, he's very low energy, but emotionally, he's very high energy. So these are the things you wanna to learn to be able to read about your horse. And so when I move around him, I'm physically slow because that's what he's like physically. And I'm not emotionally fast, but I have a very calming effect, so I make sure that I don't overstimulate his emotions. And then, of course, mental, that has to do with the horse's thinking, um, him you know, paying attention to things, and also the things that he's learned. And so some horses are very mentally quick, and other horses are mentally slow. That doesn't mean they're dumb, but what it probably means is that something's in the way. Like this horse, he's mentally slow, but he's very smart. And why he's mentally slow, or appears to be that, is because he is emotionally driven. And so once I get his emotions down, which has you know, been always um, primary in our relationship to make sure that his emotions stay stable, and then he's a super learner, he picks up things quickly, and he loves to learn. But if he's emotional, just like any horse, they cannot learn. So what you need to be able to do is keep those emotions in check, your own, as well as the horses and have the strategies that'll help a horse become calmer in every sense, mentally, emotionally, and physically. But you need to do this by learning how to observe that energy and match that energy so you don't disturb the horse. And then pretty soon you can bring the horse up to the energy you want or down to the energy that you want. It doesn't mean you go around just like acting like nothing's happening. The whole point is to get harmony and then you can lead the horse where you want to go because they join with your energy. So the second thing is comfort. You can see that there's the odd little bug that lands on him or a fly, and it's not causing him too much discomfort, otherwise he would shake his head or swish his tail. Well, guess what horses will do when people are making them uncomfortable? They'll shake their head, they'll open their mouth, they'll chomp on the bit, grind their teeth, they'll swish their tails, they try to kick, rear, bite, all of the above, all the things that we don't want horses to do, they will do because they can't find comfort. So we have to become really expert at providing a horse comfort. See right here, my horse is comfortable because we're standing around doing nothing. But now I want to be able to use guiding pressure and go, can I move my horse, make a request like that, and when he moves, the pressure goes away. And not because I just went and took it away, but because when he was in harmony with my request, then it's comfortable. When he's not, like here he's leaning on me, so I'll just push a little bit more until he moves away. You'll learn a lot more about this in the session, in, in the module on responsiveness, but getting horses to know that there is comfort, that they can find relief from pressure is really important. So we have to have that control where we don't put on unwanted or unnecessary pressure mentally, emotionally, or physically, and that the horse can find a way to um, be in harmony with you. So understanding how to apply pressure and when to release it is the key to guiding your horse and for them being able to go, well, I can find relief. So now you're fulfilling my second most primary need. When you're always busy, you're not conscious of how you affect the horse, 
Um, see, even though I'm very active here, my energy is going towards you, it's not going towards the horse. When I turn to the horse, I change my energy to match his, right? So we've got to become really good at that. When a horse can find comfort, then he will trust you more and he will seek that. And a lot of that um, is also how you teach horses and train horses. It's the gentle application of pressure and the release of pressure. And some people worry about the word pressure, but even learning is pressure. Being asked a question is pressure. So how can you deliver that guidance in a way that the horse wants to accept it willingly? That's the key here. But understanding how important comfort is and how to give that to the horse is primary to your understanding and success. Then the third one is play. Some horses are very playful. Uh, they play with other horses, but they don't want to play with you. And some horses play with everything, like they'll play tricks on you, they'll dominate you. And play is usually kind of a dominance thing. You know, if you watch foals playing with each other, they're practicing dominance games, you know, for when they get older and have to survive in the herd. So when we play with horses, it is kind of dominance games, but in a way that goes, you know, I'm the leader. I'm not just trying to dominate you, but I'm the one with the plan. And so I've got to have more ideas than the horse. With Jazz, you know, he doesn't have a lot of ideas. He really, you know, likes to have a lot of guidance. But my other horse, Highland, he's got a lot of ideas. And so I have to have more ideas than him. So I'm not constantly saying no, 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 and knocking the play drive out of him, knocking that curiosity out of him. So curiosity, so there he's a little curious about me. He's just connecting. Curiosity is the key to learning. Same thing with people. If you ask questions and you're seeking knowledge and you're questing, that is curiosity that makes you a really great learner. But just like with horses, if there's not a lot of curiosity, then how do you engage that? How do you get them to want to play? Because another word for play is learning, right? And that's what we want to channel um, their play drive into is constructive things where they can learn and uh, um, start to do things with us in a very harmonious way. From very basic to very advanced things, no matter what your goal is, whatever your sport is, whatever level you want to go to, it doesn't matter. But being a really good teacher for your horse is something that's also going to keep you connected. How many times have you had a bad experience with a teacher? Right? Somebody who yelled at you, pressured you, just when you were confused and trying, they put more pressure on. So you're going to learn how to be a really good teacher for your horse. Again, no matter what you want to teach them. Because if you understand the keys to learning for a horse and the keys to teaching and how to make it simple, then pretty soon you're going to be giving the horse what he needs while you're achieving your goals and dreams with him.